In this episode, I'm going to explain how you can program your FPGA, more specifically the Basis 3, by using a VHDL language and implementing the NAND gate, just a simple program, by using two switches and one LED. Hello guys, welcome to another episode at Side Electronics World and today we are going to discuss about the FPGA, more specifically the Basis 3 FPGA. I will explain how you can download the software in order to start playing with your FPGA. So you need to go to this specific link, ceiling X, and you need to go to the support and then download and then it depends of what operation uh, system you have. So in my case, I have uh, Windows. So you need to click and download. I will not do that again because I have already downloaded. So once you click on that, you need to, it will go. It will open another page, and you need to fill in your details, your name, email address, everything, your password, why do you want to download this, and etc. So once you download that, it will show you the installer ceiling X. So you need to just click next and then you need to put your passwords and then next and then you need to agree to everything. And then next you need to click on the Vivado because you want to download the Vivado. And then you need the free version, which is the Vivado HL Webpack. And then you need to have uh, the selection like this and you need to select your location and pretty much that's it so once you do that you click next and it will start uh, installing uh, your the, the the software but bear in mind that you need to have at least 60 gigabyte um, and this space required it's 50 gigabyte as well it's a very big uh, software but it's very cool so once you do that you need to just relax because it will take around two hours depends on your computer that's all for the installation once you have downloaded everything you need to create a new project and then you need it will show you create a new without the project and then you need to select, in my case, I will select an external drive and then select, and you can rename your project. You can say test, and then next, you, you need to leave it everything like this, just do not specify source at this time. And then you need to select your uh, FPGA. So in my case, I'm using the basis number three. So the basis number three to use RTX7 and the package is CPG236 and minus one, the second. So all this information is on the top of your microchip on your FPGA board. And then next, and that's all pretty much. You. Yeah, because I have another project open, so you click yes, it will open yeah, the new project. So once you have created your new project, you need to add the source. And you have three options here. You need to add the first thing that it's you need to add or create design source. Then you click next. And if you have already a file, you can upload it. But we are going to create and you need to select the language that you are going to use. In my case, I will use VHDL, or you can use Verilog, but in my case, I will use VHDL. And you need to give a name, top module, and then you will have the sub modules as well. And then click OK and finish, and it will give you this table here. Let's maximize it. So here we're going to uh, activate the input outputs in order to create, let's say, a logic gate, NAND gate. 
and you need to just click on this port name and you can name it as x looks like you need to here x and it's going to be input and y and you need one output it's going to be the f and you need to change that as an output so all these are std logic which means it's one bit each one in order to change the length size of the signal you need to click on the bus and then you can change manually to two bits when it's zero and zero it's one bit so you can do that two bits three bits and so on but in our case in our example we are going to use just uh, one bit it's going to be zero then once you click ok so you will see here it's going to generate the module and as you can see here we have the top module if you click on that it will open and here you have the header and the beginning end it's exactly the place that you need to write your code and implement it and in our case we are going to write some code in order to implement the NAND logic so f which is the output is equal to x NAND y and semicolon so once you have add your code here you can simulate uh, around the behavior simulation save you always need to save your project so it will run uh, it, it's going to show uh, the graphical interface after you have created the interface you have to simulate you have run the simulation you need to force the inputs force constants let's say in our case we're going to use one and zero nanosecond time offset it will be it will start from the beginning then okay and then the second the y again force and constant we'll set it again force value to one and let's say that we have we will start that after five nanoseconds so we can simulate that by clicking on uh, this so actually you need also to change uh, the timing so i have set it by default to 20 nanoseconds and once i will click the number so once you click on run for 20 seconds you will see uh, the output is, uh, is is one as we can see here for the x in the one nanosecond in the beginning and then uh, in the five nanosecond you will see again one and the output f once both are one it will give you zero and then next step by uh, going to the rtl analysis you can click on the open elaborated design in order to see your design so i'm expecting a NAND gate with two inputs and one output but it will take a few seconds and this is how it looks like so we have one input x and the other is y and one NAND gate with an OR gate so it gives us a NAND gate uh, which f is the output so after we have simulated uh, our um, NAND gate so it hasn't implemented yet just it's just a simulation we need to go and add the constraint file here in the source the constraint file so in order to do that you need to go back to your uh, browser you need to open a new page i will copy the link below of my video and you will see that it has the master basis 3 but it depends on your pga but in my case it's this one so you need to click here control and copy everything control c and then you need to go back to your project you need to go again add source and in this time instead of using add or create design source 
you need to add or create constraints. Next, create file. So you need to type constraints and then OK and then finish. In order to find your constraint file, you need to close the elaborated design. You go on the source and you will see in the constraint it has been created constraints text D and you need to paste everything here. As you can see here some of part of the code is not commented so you need to comment it out otherwise once you're going to compile it will just add all these bits that you don't want. So it, as you can see, it has SPI flash, it has USB HID, RS32, RS, uh, FPGA connector, DMA header, remote header, remote header JB, JA, buttons, in that case is the seven segment we don't need that for now. The LEDs you need to comment them out. The switches comment them out again. The clock we don't need at the moment. Once you make sure that uh, all the, the part of the code here is commented out, you need to understand actually what you need. In our case we need two inputs and two out when one output. So we have X and Y as an input. So we need a switch. So we can comment out this line here and by doing it again click toggle line command. It will comment out the two uh, inputs. So you, you can see that it has set property package pin V17 and then in both cases, we need to change. We need to add the input here. It's going to be X. And here, again, it will be X. And for the second input, it will be Y. It must be into these square brackets. And the second input is Y, and then we need one output, which we are going to turn on an LED. So you need to comment one comment, these two lines here, and you need to do exactly the same. In that case, it's F and F, and once you select all the inputs and the outputs actually you're pretty much done and then you can continue the steps after we did the rtl analysis you can do the synthesis and the implementation but i will do in order to avoid all these steps just generate the bit stream which is going to do automatically both and save and then okay it will take a while, so now you will see that it will start running the synthetic design and then the implementation. So just relax, make, some, make a coffee and then you can come back and check that. So now you can see that it has finished. You need to cancel this and then you need to go to the open hardware. So you need to make sure that you have connected via micro USB your FPGA board. and open hardware manager and you will see then no hardware targeted target is open so you need to open that and auto connect so it will start looking or also connecting to server while it's looking for my board and once it it detects the FPGA so then you need to program the device just click on here, it's automatically it's going to find the top module bit, the bitstream file, and once you click on the program, it will 
automatically program your FPGA board. And this is my FPGA board. And if you remember, I programmed the switch number one and switch number two for X and Y, and the output it would be the LED. And as you can see now, uh, set to, I will zoom in more, to zero. And once I will click this one to one, the LEDs will be on and on. And if I will change the position of the switch uh, one and two to one and one, it will turn off the LED, which is correct for the NAND gate. We're expecting one, it's when it's one and one, it's uh, the output is zero. And when I will just change the position of the first one, it's zero and one, it, the LED is on. And when it's zero, zero, the output is one. That was it for today. Thank you for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed. Please share and subscribe and I will see you in the next episode.